recall that Plato's virtue uh, ethics involves primarily four virtues, right? The four that we kind of hinted at or hinted at in the early dialogues, the ones that Socrates really concerned himself with. Temperance or moderation, courage, wisdom, and justice. Now, to understand Plato's theory of virtue, you have to realize that justice to Plato is something that's a little bit different from the other three virtues. Right? The other three virtues are internal. They're virtues of individual character. But justice is something that exists between people, even if it's just between a single person and how their actions uh, reflect you know, the laws and everything. Um, by their nature, uh, by its nature, justice is a moral uh, question, and therefore it is concerned with our relationship to other people. So, um, let's see. The other three virtues temperance, courage, and wisdom, being individual and internal, have to have a source. Right? The source of justice is going to be arising from uh, proper action, right? and therefore proper inter uh, uh, the, uh, interaction between ourselves and others. Right? Um, but the other three are internal. So their source has to be something that's inside every one of us. And this leads us to Plato's tripartite theory of the soul. Right? Uh, so his tripartite, sorry, his theory of the tripartite soul. Yeah. Tripartite just means of three parts. Now, according to Plato, every individual has a soul, right? Um, and they're born with certain predispositions that lend them towards, um, you know, fulfilling, uh, 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 towards uh, certain aspects of the soul being greater or lesser and being more or less open to development. Right? Uh, it's a little bit of a meritocratist view of the soul. Right? Um, certain people in their reincarnations are just more inclined towards developing certain aspects of the soul than others are. And there's nothing wrong with that, according to uh, Plato. But it is still an important feature. And yeah, Plato's theory of the soul is based in on reincarnation, in a view of reincarnation that seems to be uh, at least fairly influenced by uh, the Hindu notion of reincarnation. Uh, remember, uh, one thing, remember one of the things that's true of this time period is that there was actually a lot of interchange between various parts of the Eurasian continent, right? Uh, there was, we have records of travel between uh, what we consider ancient Greece and Persia and Egypt and also between those places in India and for ancient Greece and Persia with some trade with China as well. Right? The world was not just divided along, you know, these geographical regions. There was overflow and interaction between them. So the three parts of the soul, according to Plato, are Eros, which is responsible for our bodily desires and therefore is governed by the uh, virtue of temperance, right? To properly exercise eros, right? And develop uh, that, uh, that aspect means developing the virtue as well, right? And then we have thumos, which is the spirit, right? Um, it is responsible for our will to overcome, to face adversity, and therefore lines up with the uh, virtue of courage. And finally, we have logos, or the intellect. It's responsible for knowledge. And proper knowledge is knowledge properly exercised. Remember, the Greek word for, the major Greek word for wisdom was sophos, right? Sophos being 
composed of two forms of knowledge, knowing what something is and knowing that it is, and knowing how to act based off of that knowledge. It's not a knowledge divided from action, or a wisdom divided from action, the way that your grandfather might be wise in the fact that he's accumulated much experience and he can impart little nuggets on you. Well, your grandparents are wise and yeah. Um, I'll try for more gender neutral expressions. All right, but those bits of wisdom may or may not have relevance in your own life, right? Things like, oh, you gotta pound the pavement, get out there, get your name, uh, your resume out there. That's not really how a lot of it works anymore. Uh, that's invalid wisdom, right? It was wisdom for your grandparents' time and for perhaps your parents' time, but not for our own, uh, where everything is, you know, apply by, you know, website. And then, uh, 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 um, but yeah, so wisdom has to be knowledge of something and knowledge of how that applies, right? It's practical wisdom in a particular way. Um, and then these three aspects, right? People can have the three aspects of the soul in greater or lesser amounts. Think of the soul sort of like as a pie chart, as it were divided into three parts. So you might have a section, uh, uh, one person might have a section, uh, uh, you know, the largest section of their soul by a clear majority might be Eros, in which case the uh, part of their soul that uh, has the most bounce and affects their actions the most means that, uh, 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 means that they have to develop the one virtue associated with it the most. So someone who is controlled by their desires needs to exercise temperance more. Someone who is controlled by, uh, or who is given more towards the spirit and has more will to overcome needs to exercise courage better so that they don't go in excess of courage, right? Um, that they're not just driven by that will excessively. They know when to pull back. And then you have you know, in the case of someone who's ruled by Logos, they need to develop wisdom more, right? And for Plato, this aligns with his notion of the just city, right? And the just city is going to be the morally structured city. Uh, and to his mind, there are three classes of citizens within the just city, and therefore, and these line up with the three aspects of the soul and the three virtues. So the majority of people, according to Plato, are just going to be governed by eros, right? That is going to be the defining feature of their lives, their, uh, uh, their individual desires and exercising temperance, right? And so the average citizen needs to develop temperance, right? Uh, and that's going to create the clear majority. These are going to be the salespeople, the, you know, um, food, uh, you know, the fishermen, the food vendors, um, you know, the tailors, all that. Then there are going to be the protectors or guardians of the city and uh, of the just city. And these are going to be people who are driven primarily by thumos, right? Uh, and these individuals need primarily courage but they also need to have a well-developed sense of temperance. I mean, if you go in, uh, going into battle means nothing if, you know, you're going into battle drunk, right? Uh, if you get absolutely shit-faced the night before the battle, then you're not going to be effective in the battle, no matter if you have the will to persevere or not, uh, and so on and so forth. Right. And it also means exercising temperance, like not giving into anger and things like that when dealing uh, with the enforcement of laws within the cities, because the guardians in Plato's just city are not just the, you know, soldiers. They're also law enforcement officials. Right. Functionally. And then to move from being a guardian to being uh, one of the rulers, or as Socrates, not Socrates, Plato calls them, uh, the philosopher kings, 
you need to spend 10 years learning, right? Studying the laws, coming to understand them, right? Developing that wisdom, developing your sense of, uh, uh, you know, your logos as a result. And only when you have a proper understanding from both implementing the laws, enforcing them, and studying them so that you under, uh, know them on an intellectual level, can you, can, uh, uh, can you wind up becoming a ruler, right? Uh, because rulers have to have all three uh, virtues, right? They, they absolutely must. They must have temperance so that they don't just go about making laws that suit them. Uh, they must have courage to make laws that might be looked upon unfavorably by those, uh, uh, by the citizens who m don't understand the purpose or see the laws as being detrimental where, uh, where they really are beneficial. And they must have wisdom to be able to distinguish between what are good policy choices and which ones are bad. Right? Uh, and this is the basis of the just city. Now, the just city also requires that you have these three classes of citizens, according to Plato. Uh, and this makes some sense when you consider it. Uh, you don't have to agree with it, but there's a particular logic behind it. For if you have a city without citizens, but that is made up of rulers and guardians, then the guardians are really guarding nothing and the rulers are really ruling nothing. And what you effectively have is a tribalistic, moving, uh, a mobile army, really. You just have an army at that point. Um, if you have a, sorry, if you have a city where there are average citizens and there are rulers, but there are no protectors, then there is no uh, buffer between uh, you know, uh, between uh, between the average citizen and the uh, and the rulers. So the rulers can wind up enforcing unfair laws leading to tyranny, and conversely, the average citizens can gather in mass and just commit to anarchy whenever the mood strikes and overthrowing uh, the existing leaders and structure. Right. Uh, functionally, the idea that Plato has in mind is that the guardians don't just guard against, um, uh, you know, don't just enforce the laws on the average citizens, they make sure they're enforced on the rulers as well. Uh, that doesn't tend to be how it works out in most cases, though, right? People up top get away with a lot in the majority of science, uh, societies. Um, now, the, in the last case, if you have a society that is just average ruler, uh, citizens and uh, the next, and basically military or law enforcement, then you have a military dictatorship, right? Uh, you have a militant civilization and it's going to be tyrannical and oppressive, right? Uh, because in that case, the people who are creating the, uh, of the rules are going to be the people who are enforcing them too. And that way leads tyranny. Right? So you need all three aspects are, of the soul developed appropriately for each corresponding member, uh, you know, a level of society, and for each one to do their job to have a just city, according to Plato.